Hi, in this slide I want to circle back to my story of uh, my case turnaround back in 1983 with Clark Security Products. After going out and surveying, uh, you know, big uh, core profitable customers, uh, remember the little triangle, uh, I came back to the, the box in the bottom left hand corner, all my employees, and I said, all right, here's what we're going to do to reinvent our service value equation. We're going to go from a 2 p.m. cutoff for next day delivery to 5 p.m. Long story as to why they, these, these customers would die and go to heaven for that. But our inside salespeople went home at 4.30. The UPS truck, where, by which we ship most of our stuff, came at 3.30. So that's why they had a 2 p.m. cutoff. So I had to basically bribe the UPS guy, reweave the business and so forth to have a 5 p.m. cutoff. Later, it was actually extended to 6 p.m because commercial customers of locksmiths would call the locksmith on their cell phone while they're driving home saying, I need all the locks changed in my, my building because I fired somebody who I think is emotionally unstable and they have a key to the building. Get out here right away. Second thing was that customers would occasionally, you know, order a bunch of items and one of the line items, uh, there was an unacceptable back order, a partial was shipped or a substitute that wasn't viable and it was a critical item they needed for a critical must get out there, do it right away job. So now they had downtime, they'd upset customer and so forth. So. We basically hired a trainee for the inside sales person desk and they became the callback person. And they would say, you know, you called in earlier and you gave us five line items and on number four, you wanted 10 of these. Well, it turns out that a computer said we had 11, we only have six. Can we ship six complete and back, or do you want us to back order four or we have a substitution? They didn't know what they're talking about. An experienced person had given them the list of options. but. And most of the time, the customer said, well, actually, it wasn't a critical line item. I'm just wondering for it's stock, so six is fine, or the substitute would be great. But every time they said, I can't believe you cared enough to call back. And by the way, while you're on the phone, can I give you some more stuff that has accumulated? So what we were really doing is calling back later and getting more add-ons to the same order. For, so for the fixed cost of a paperwork set and shipping costs and stopping a truck, we we're getting a larger average order size. Now, you'll notice the next thing, there's a there's a, this experiment. There's a, a, a red C, here's a red A, and here's a red B. And the following uh, video clips, I'm going to address red A, B, and C in that order. But for right now, I'll just say that I did not have line item profit analytics. So I did have based on number of picks. I could rank all of the items based on how often they were picked. I said take the most picked, 100 picked items, and out of 5,000 were active, out of 15,000 were collecting dust out there in this turnaround. I said, uh, you know, figure out what our average investment inventory is and tell me if we beefed all those by 20, 10%, 20%, 30%, how much that money is. And I'll borrow that money from the bank and beef these items up, changing the reward points, order quantities, and so forth to invest in higher fill rates on most popular items. Um, of course, now I would be able to, to do it specifically in most profitable items and fix the losers before I beef those up and, and do even a better job on losing money on them. While we were I was out visiting the customers, I said, who are the other vendors you do business with that you have open trade credit with who aren't my head to head competitors? In other words, I'm assuming the two or three people you give 80% of your spend to, but 50% of your vendors only get 10% of the spend. I just want to do a quick little spreadsheet here and see if there are miscellaneous items that we could put in stock for you to help consolidate out this little paperwork and, and, and really ride on our better service excellence platform. And uh, often, they some of the items they, they put down, we actually had. They just didn't know we had them. So that was a way of selling more old items to the same old customer at a larger average or size basis. There were a few uh, sort of uh, surprisingly cool new SKUs that we discovered that they all were buying, but they were such random, goofy things that nobody really thought about it. So we you know, probably added another 15, 20 items that really rounded out and put icing on the cake of we have the best one-stop shop in stock fill rate service value for you. Um, of course, right away, I got the the 10 best customers pictures up on the wall and everybody knew who they were by heart and we talked about yes heroic act service we also right away put an unconditionally guaranteed zero errors and on-time delivery just for these 10 guys then we went to 20 when you're 40 eventually we did it for everybody uh, 
I've just I basically boiled this all down to what I called the big eight of service excellence. And those went up on the wall, it became a new religion. I had to actually, you know, create a service manager who was in charge of gathering, posting, monitoring, and continually improving the processes and the people inside those processes that made that service happen. Right away, I went and looked at the bottom of the list and said, you know, who's this biggest loser? Oh, he's the king, you know, of Orange County. And it turns out the king, we were losing $15,000 to the king, and he was cherry picking us for one goofy item every day kind of thing. So I went and visited him, had a nice visit. But when I realized, you know, I asked the question of who do you buy from, why do you buy, and when you change, I realized that he was just a cherry picker. I then said, well, and I explained that I was losing a lot of money. He said, that's your problem. I said, no, no, it's our problem because you're getting service value and uptime for your, and your production productive for your, 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 your van jocks and, and taking care of customers on time. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to unilaterally say that there'll be new terms. So I'm going to put you on credit hold. You're going to be a strict minimum. You'll take it be a house account and so forth. He said, you do that. I'll never buy from you again. So I said, that'd be great. I just saved myself $15,000 in 45 minutes worth of time. That's a terrific return on my invested time. I picked the salesman up the floor and we walked out. And the king went on strike for about three weeks, but then they needed a goofy item, well, a bunch of goofy items. They called up and said, hey, do you have any of these items? And our people said, well, sure, yeah, we do, but you're on credit hold. Okay, trust me, the check's in the mail. Yeah, but then you have a minimum order of 200 bucks. Okay, here's another $180 of vanilla to get the $20 item I need. So the king became a $36,000 a year list price, pay freight, very profitable account because we still had the cherries. Uh, the bottom line was over the next 12 months, once we got our service excellence up and going, we doubled our sales and we quadrupled our profits and our return on sales went from a minus 2% loss to a plus 5% gain. And that was just the beginning. So that's the story of number one case. Now, when it comes to yes service, we're going to look at that next. Thanks.